Here's the best part of all of this, the best part. I mean, it's it's a, I expected the Supreme Court to do what it did, and I'm glad it did, a nine, did it 9-0. It's undeniable, and you can't argue with them now. But listen to this. Here's the reason why it matters. <laughs> it matters politically because Trump's going to be on the ballots now. That's the number one way in which it matters politically. But it also matters very much in terms of the narrative over the next nine months. This is what one of Biden's top advisors just told The New Yorker. Okay, about how we're going to get to the terrible polling that just came out, New York Times slash Siena and CBS. It's devastating. That's the headline. Devastating for Joe Biden, as so many of the polls have been. It's all going in the wrong direction for him. This is why there's not a full on meltdown on the left yet about Biden or a, an even more robust push to get him out and get somebody else in. So Mike Donilon, top Biden advisor, tells The New Yorker, this is their theory of the case of the election and how they're going to win. Quoting here, um, by November, he predicted, the focus will become overwhelming on democracy. I think the biggest images in people's minds are going to be of January 6th. So this is their, this is what, this is their plan. Democracy, democracy, democracy. And we saw in the 2022 midterms that that worked for them. That actually did work for them. Saw it on the exit polls. However, this whole effort, what Georgia did, not Georgia, what um, Colorado did, what Maine did, and what Illinois just did the same thing, kicking Trump off the ballot, that's all reversed now, um, has completely undermined their argument. That's it. And the American public's aware of these cases. It's not like they, if you ask the average American, did you know they're trying to kick Trump off the ballot in a few states? I think the average American knows the answer is, yeah, it's crazy. This is, com it completely neutralizes they're saying Republicans are the threat to democracy. You're the threat to democracy. Yes, Trump behaved terribly around January 6th. I, and there aren't that many people who are gonna argue that. But the Democrats are the ones trying to take the vote away from voters right now for the 2024 election. No, no matter how bad you feel about the 2020 election, Dave, it's in the past. I think the active threat right now looks very much like Team Blue. Yeah, listen, listen I've, I've covered January 6th and the implications of it since January 6th. Uh, and I can tell you this, since the January 6th committee did its primetime hearings and hired an ABC News producer to, you know, come in and, and you know, make Trump look as bad as possible, not only did the polls move slightly against them, not, not only did, did more people come around to say, well, maybe this isn't so bad, since then, those polls have not moved at all. It's not even that nobody cares. It's that everybody's opinion is locked in stone. So, I mean, this idea that suddenly everyone's going to wake up on November 1st and be like, hey, remember January 6th, three years ago? That's what's really bad. I know, like, I can't afford any food at the grocery store, but I'm really worried about that. It, it doesn't make any sense. I don't think Donilon believes it. I think it's a placeholder argument. I think he's got to say something. Um but look, it's failed. Even Biden has backed off. Remember, like two months ago, every day it was like MAGA extremist this and MAGA extremist that. I think even the campaign has backed off because his, as you note, his polling numbers are only getting worse. That message isn't working. That dog isn't going to hunt. So they're going to have to try to find something else or someone else. All right. So what is that? Because I, let's discuss the polls. So CBS News just out with this poll, likely voters we always say that that's what you want to look for. Registered voters are interesting, but mm, mildly. Likely voters, that's what you look at. Pay attention. Those are the people who have voted before and are very likely to vote again. Choice for president, Biden 42, Trump 52. A 10 percentage point lead. That's amazing. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, how would you rate their presidencies? Trump, looking back, 46% say excellent or good. How many say that about Biden? 33%. Um, that was registered voters. The rest is registered. Um, how was the, how was the economy under Trump? 65%. Good. Current under Biden, only 38%. Think it's good. Their policies will make prices go up. Biden. Yeah. 55% believe Biden's policies will make them go up. How many people believe that about Trump? 34%. Whose policies will make prices go down? Biden. Only 17% think that. Trump. 44% believe Donald Trump's policies will make prices go down. I mean, we could keep going. And then I'll switch over to the New York Times-Siena poll. 
that one's registered. But if the 2024 presidential election were held today, who would you vote for? Trump, 48, Biden, 43. Trump up five percentage points. The largest lead, quoting here from Nate Cohen at New York Times, the largest lead Mr. Trump has ever had in a Times Siena national poll. In fact, it's the largest lead he's had in a Times Siena or Times CBS poll since the first running for president back in 2015. The Biden voters among Dems, the share that are enthusiastic, 23%. The share of Trump voters who are enthusiastic, 48%, 48%. So more than double the enthusiasm of the Dems. The numbers keep going. We'll get into some more, but I don't think we can overstate the devastation that is in these numbers, Stu. This is five alarm fire time. It is call Michelle Obama time. It's time. It totally is. It's everything's on the table time. And again, these are from their respected pollsters. These aren't, I mean, this isn't some Rasmussen poll that they can dismiss or Trafalgar or something that they don't like. This is from the New York Times. I mean, New York Times Siena is one of the most, you know, uh, respected pollsters out there. They they do a good job with polls. And this is showing results that the Democrats must absolutely hate. And their argument seems to come down to basically, eventually we'll get this Death Star put together and everything will be fine when it's fully operational. I don't see how that works for them right now. I mean, it's not impossible, to be fair. I mean, they will have six months of a media doing everything they can to help them. They will try to make Bidenomics look like it's working. They will try all these things. But I think the American people are pretty resistant to completely ignoring the truth that appears in their lives. So it's going to be a really hard sell. And then you're kind of just, I think, depending on the emotions of the moment. We all know that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that really can't stand Donald Trump and will not listen to any argument that results in him being president. They don't want to hear it. They don't like him. And they were they are depending on that showing its face. And I think where the mistake they're making is, number one, their biggest problem with voters is not solvable. The economy actually is solvable. Maybe we'll have some amazing run. Maybe they can convince people that things are better. Maybe the inflation fears subside. There are things like that that are actually solvable. The age thing is not solvable. Mm. And every single person sees it. Every single person knows it. The, the Time Siena polling on this is terrible. And there's no way for him to reverse this other than some miracle of modern science that we're no longer, you know, we're not aware of yeah. yet. So Only one thing solves a, the age thing, and that's not really a solution for anybody. It leads to Kamala Harris being president. It does. It does. And uh, they, of course, don't want that either because she's not better. Although that would at least solve this one major problem that they have, I suppose. <laughs> um, and and you, you look at this, and I think the one thing they're overlooking with this is in 2020, they were able to res, to, to re rely on the fact that a lot of people really hated Donald Trump. And if you keep Biden out of, the, out, of the, uh, out of their faces, they won't think about him at all. And every vote will be cast either for or against Donald Trump. And they think they can win that election. And they did win that election in 2020. They think they can run that playbook back in 2024. The problem is two parts there. One is now Biden is president. So now it's not just a no, nothing they're measuring Donald Trump against. They're measuring him against a, a, a president that has, as all this polling shows, hurt them. His policies have hurt these voters, and yeah. now they're expected to embrace him. And secondarily, time heals wounds. Like, people don't really remember the things that they didn't like about Donald Trump in, let's say, September of 2020 as they're approaching the election. They're thinking about, well, you know, the economy was good. And, you know, at least a lot of these things, I don't remember being assaulted by my government every single day. Yeah, Trump tweeted a lot, but I can kind of put that aside because the economy is really important. And all. And, I don't remember and at immigrants least everywhere honestly. killing young girls going out for a jog on university campuses. I mean, yes, you're right. There are actual data points in the news every day now that they can look back at. The economy is always a big one, although immigration seems to be surpassing it right now with voters, Dave. The... Uh, Listen to this stat. This is back to that New York Times, Siena. Non-white voters who did not graduate from college, Biden's up by six points with them. Okay, well, you might be thinking, oh, he's up by six points. He won this group by almost 50 points in 2020. My God, that, yeah. he can't, he can't <clears throat> win if this stays this way. He, where does he make up for those lost voters. Okay, the, the soccer moms, they already went for Biden. 
If anything, yeah. they're probably migrating back over to Trump by a trickle, not by these m- numbers, but he can't win if that stays like that. Yeah, I mean, he had 72 percent of of that demographic. I, the, the one that really jumped out to me, um, he lost 10 percent of Biden voters, by, by which I mean of people who voted for Joe Biden in 2020, 10 percent say they're not going to vote for Joe Biden. Not only does that make Donald Trump president, I mean, that that makes Donald Trump president in a landslide. And I think Stu just hit on something really important because like Stu is right. There are those people who they really they're not they don't like Donald Trump and they refuse to think of him as being president. There's also a group of people who aren't nuts about Donald Trump. They don't really like Donald Trump, but are willing to be transactional about it. I remember being in an auction once and the auctioneer was trying to move something and nobody was biting. And he finally said, you know, you don't have to like it to buy it. And and what he meant was, this is a good deal. You can turn this around and make some money off it. And he eventually sold it, right? Because people will think with their minds and they'll say exactly what Stu said. Like, like I was better off under this guy, even if I'm not a big fan of him. So I do think that people are moving to Trump in that direction. And they're moving away from Biden in the opposite direction. And that poor guy, I mean, he's taken it on all sides now. I mean, he's taken it from the left on Israel. Uh, he's taking it from the right on the border. I mean, th- there is no place that he can step right now without stepping on a landmine. Uh, and it's uh, I don't I don't know what the path out of that landmine is. OK, so a couple of years ago, I bought these glasses from Bond Charge. I use the orange ones when I'm watching TV and I use the yellow ones when my eyes are tired from looking at the computer and I love them. My whole family loves them. You know, sometimes your eyes are just tired at the end of the day. My little guy Thatcher and I put on our orange glasses and we watched Liar Liar the other day. It was actually really fun. Bond Charge is a great company and they have this whole approach to wellness that's holistic. So there's a bunch of fun stuff on on their websites that you could check out uh, because it's a brand dedicated to optimizing all aspects of your life. They're grounded in science, they're inspired by nature, and their evidence-based products cover a broad spectrum of premium wellness items like those glasses, okay? But there's, it's not just the glasses. From enhancing sleep and boosting uh, performance to upping your energy and accelerating recovery and balancing hormones, Bond Charge offers a diverse range of benefits. Here's the thing they want you to consider now. Their infrared sauna blanket from Bond Charge that they say can burn extra calories and detoxify. This innovative blanket elevates your heart rate, simulating the effects of physical exercise. Bond Charge says sweating during the process will help eliminate heavy metals and toxins from your body. And setting it up takes less than a minute, and then it rapidly heats up for a quick and convenient experience. For a limited time, save 15% by visiting Bond, B-O-N, Charge, C-H-A-R-G, dot com slash M-K. And use that coupon code M-K bondcharge.com slash MK. Use the coupon code MK to save 15%. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.